Well, hey, this is great. This has been Sorrell with um, Editor of Case, and I'm speaking with uh, Jerry Arajema today, who's um, coming as our uh, guest author on the new Author Spotlight series for Case. Um, these author spotlights are really designed to be very focused, very short, and on a specific topic that we think um, is of interest to you. And so, Jerry, hey, thanks a lot for speaking with me regarding what I think is a great topic, a really fun topic, which is mid-systolic notch of the RVOT pulse wave Doppler. I know you and uh, Matt put together this wonderful editorial. And uh, for those that are tuning in, feel free to um, take a, a pic of our link in the background and you could uh, pull up the article there on your phone. Um, so maybe you can start by telling us why you became interested in this topic and kind of what you learned about it as you were uh, putting together this editorial. Yeah, thanks Vince. And Congratulations on your new position and knowing you as I do, I know you're going to be a positive disruptive force and uh, do great things with Case and I, I hope to be along for the ride. So um, we were asked to, uh, Matt Parker and I and Matt Gottbrecht, uh, two of my colleagues here at UMass, were asked to write a, an editorial uh, on an article looking at mid-systolic notching on the pulmonary uh, flow envelope uh, and trying to get at the issue of whether or not this notching was very specific for pulmonary, primary pulmonary disease of pulmonary hypertension, or could this be seen uh, in other causes of pulmonary hypertension, the, uh, namely the group two uh, or HEFPEF patients. And because I think there was a thought that uh, when you see a notch, uh, in the pulmonary, uh, the, the right ventricular outflow tract tracing, this was very specific uh, for uh, post-capillary, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, pre-capillary pulmonary hypertension. And what the authors of this nice paper found was uh, there was a, a population of patients who had post-capillary pulmonary hypertension that did show the notch on their pulmonary venous tracing. So um, ever since I heard a, a lecture by Paul Forfia, uh, who came up to UMass, Paul is at Temple, um, I've been very, very interested in this and, and so have my colleagues. So uh, that's basically it. We, we, looked at, um, we looked at the paper and we um, also looked at a really nice editorial that was written by the MGH group on this topic, uh, put an illustration in the paper uh, and basically what we're dealing with, the reason we have the notch, and this is what I learned in reviewing, was uh, you have wave reflections that uh, when the pulmonary vascular resistance is increased, you have wave reflections uh, that come back and summate while the ventricle is still ejecting and, and cause that notch. And I think that's really, that's really, really fascinating to me as I was reading through that because this is the sort of thing that we see so often. And sometimes we take for granted, like what's the creation of it. And I thought you guys do a really good job of describing that sort of the speed and the, the amount of the non-compliance affecting that reflective wave. And that's what interrupts the normal, right? That normal parabolic yeah. spectral flow. I, I love that. I thought it was really descriptive and well done. Well, I'd, I'd like to say that this was original work on our part, but uh, it was really uh, collating what other people had observed. Um, but I think it, it, it makes a coherent picture. Uh, it, it puts together a coherent picture and it makes physiologic sense. I think a couple things I've learned over the years uh, is to look at the acceleration time of that RV outflow track signal. Uh, and generally, the shorter that acceleration time is, uh, the higher the pulmonary artery pressure is. Um, and, and also that you have to be looking at, you have to be looking at pulsed wave velocity yep. as opposed yep. to continuous wave. Uh, I, you can make a mistake if you look at the CW profile and say, wow, this is a short acceleration time, better look for pulmonary hypertension. Uh, you won't be doing your colleagues any services uh, by saying that to them. I should also add that uh, for those of you uh, who like M mode and, and remember your M mode, uh, your basic M modes, right, the fly, so called flying W yeah. uh, is, uh, is really the M mode, the motion counterpart of the flow signal uh, that we're talking about. 
Yeah, I think that's wonderful. When I was in Arizona, we have a uh, uh, burger place out there called Whataburger, and it's this great big W in it. Right. I, couldn't, I couldn't drive past it without seeing, right, the M mode of the pulmonic valve and pulmonary hypertension. You know you're looking at too many echoes when you're <laughs> flying W's uh, right at the, at, the, at the burger joint. Um, well, yeah. Let me just say, and, and you know, I know you've been thinking about this too, Vince. Um, there are technical issues, and uh, I don't think we've completely worked it out what is the standard approach. But I do think that the technical issues are, are really important. We've outlined some of those in the paper um, in our editorial and um, I think you have to pay attention to technical because uh, we had our, I had our sonographers basically dial a notch for me. And, and you can, if you're along the wall and you're not in the center of the flow stream, you can create, uh, you can create artifacts that look like notches. So it's got, you have to integrate it with everything else that's going on. That's wonderful. And um, for those of you, again, that, um, may not be familiar with this in detail, feel free to go ahead and uh, check out this article that's in Jace. Um, I think the uh, editorial and its associated um, uh, case uh, that it was discussing, the paper that was published that it was discussing is worthwhile. And uh, Jerry and Matt do a really good job of walking through some recommendations uh, to try to you know, collect data on index expiration. Other things. You should look at this, you should learn from it. Um, and again, I wanna thank Jerry, uh, Dr. Arajema for his time today. I hope. You guys all learned something new. I know that I did. And remember, I guess uh, every case that you see has a teaching point and every teaching point that you see is a potential new case publication. So send them our way. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Wonderful. Thanks, Vince.